There are 25 different types of Pokeball in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. As a shiny hunter, I've always tried to match the shiny with the perfect type of ball. But I've always wondered, what's the best shiny for each Pokeball? Well, that's what I'm here to find out today. So come along with me on this epic journey. Alright, so there's a little elephant in the room we gotta discuss right off the bat. There's technically 27 types of Pokeball in these games. The Cherish Ball, this beautiful red, and the Strange Ball, this really cool teal. They both look awesome. The problem is that these balls are not obtainable to be used to catch any Pokemon you want all willy-nilly. The Cherish Ball is only given to you through Mystery Gift Pokemon. So, the Sasui and Zoroark that I have was caught with a Cherish Ball. Now, you can get shiny gift Pokemon in a Cherish Ball, just none that truly match its color scheme to its greatest potential. Also, you don't catch them, so it wouldn't really be an exciting hunt. You can get a shiny in a Strange Ball, probably one that matches decently, but since it can't be obtained in Scarlet and Violet, I'm just gonna ignore it as well. Moving on to the original ball, the regular Pokeball. Now, I have a slight issue with the Pokeball. In all depictions of this ball, any image online, or in the anime, or whatever, it is red. So, Gyarados, Chargebug, or other red shinies are a great choice. But for some reason in game, it doesn't have as deep of a red color, at least to my eyes. Regardless, like I already said, there's tons of great options for the Pokeball. My personal favorite though, is the Pokemon that looks like a Pokeball. No, not this one. And not this one. It's gotta be shiny. Tarantula. It is red, and it is round. And with a bug sandwich, in this area of Paldea, you'll exclusively find the Spooter. This spot is also great to showcase the newest shiny hunting method in Scarlet and Violet because somehow, over a year into this game's lifespan, we're just now learning about this. When you make a picnic, every Pokemon despawns. We all know this, right? Getting rid of the picnic makes the Pokemon respawn. Again, everyone knows this. What you might not know is that there's a limit of 15 Pokemon that could be spawned in at one time. So, you'll never have more than 15 wild Pokemon on your screen at once. Unless, one of them is a shiny. Supposedly the game has always worked this way, but we're just now learning about it. And I decided I was going to put this new method to the test. So I made picnic, after picnic, after picnic, counting how much tarantula were on my screen each time. And every time, there were 15. Until there wasn't. Hmm, something here is off. Good thing I was counting how many there were, otherwise I might not have noticed it. The perfect round Pokemon for the Pokeball. The Great Ball. They're great. Sorry. Now, the obvious choice for this ball is the ball I was talking about before, except the shiny of it. But these two red nubs. These things drive me crazy. So, instead of catching this, I want to catch a Pokemon that is mostly blue and also has some red in it. And I just so happen to know the perfect target. Meet Yanma. Yanma spawn right outside Mosui Town in Kitakami. It's also another bug type, so that's convenient. So all I have to do is keep running in and out of this town. And eventually... Oh, oh, ah! Now, taking a look at Shiny Yanma, I'm sure most of you would agree the Dive Ball is a better match for it than the Great Ball. But I have some big things planned for this Dragonfly. So I caught it, then taught it Ancient Power, then gave it a little candy, and there you have it. Our actual catch for the Great Ball. Yan Mega. Luxray might be the most fitting Shiny for a Pokeball ever. That being the Ultra Ball. So, what I'm about to say might surprise you, but I did not catch a Luxray in an Ultra Ball. Instead, the honor of the Ultra Ball goes to this pile of sand. Sandy Ghast is one of the easiest shinies to find in all of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. 
If you go to the beach right next to Lavincia with a ghost encounter sandwich, it's all you'll see. And its shiny is so obvious. Additionally, the hunt can be made even easier if it's raining. Because when it is, all the sandcastles die, I guess. Unfortunately for me, the rain stopped before a shiny one showed up. But not too much afterwards. God, I love this shiny. One of my favorites from Gen 7. And although I will be catching it in an Ultra Ball, I can't lie, I was tempted to use the Moon Ball on this thing. It has all three colors. It would be a great fit. I do have other plans for the Moon Ball though, so we'll get to that. Anyways, I caught the little Sandy guy, and then evolved him. I'm not sure if Palo San Shiny fits the Ultra Ball better than Sandy S, but oh well. Circling back to Luxray though, the reason I didn't catch it in an Ultra Ball was because I had something else up my sleeve for it. I went to the Shinx Outbreak in Kitakami and started blasting. This shiny is another one that is extremely easy to spot. And after about 20 minutes looking, there it was. So what could be better than the Ultra Ball for this guy? The Level Ball. Why you ask? Because when I evolve it into Luxray, it's got this teensy little bit of red in its eyes. Regardless, both the Ultra and Level Ball are a great fit for this Pokemon. Another one that I think is an obvious choice is a Pokemon just brought into Scarlet and Violet with the Indigo Disc, Duraldon. It definitely doesn't have the greatest shiny out there, and reminds me of all the Future Paradoxes shinies. Maybe Duraldon was the first Future Paradox. Hmm. Anyways, it's the only Dragon type you'll find on the Ice Mountain. And its shiny is a little tough to see. The best way to notice it is to look at the red nubs on Duraldon's head. If it's chrome, then it's a shiny. And I don't think there's a better shiny for the heavy ball. Its chrominess and its dark blue spots match perfectly. The timer ball is timeless. It has a really underrated design and it surprisingly has a good chunk of shiny Pokemon that match all three of its colors. Although I'm not a fan of these two, they both match the Timer Ball really well. Unfortunately for all six of the Incineroar and Cinderace fans out there, I'm going to be catching a different Pokemon. So I went to the Timeless Woods in Kitakami. Even the location on the map is fitting, because there was a Phantump outbreak. And Phantump has an insanely cool shiny, but I guess it wanted to keep in theme with the ball because it took its sweet time. But eventually... Now, this color scheme definitely goes hard. But let me know if you think Trevenant Shiny looks even better. And while you're down there in the comments letting me know, why don't you also like and subscribe? It helps me out a ton. But for the time being, I choose to keep Phantom as a little baby. I'm not sure why, but the Dusk Ball is one of my favorite looking Pokeballs. Maybe because I like the color green? Who knows. But I had a specific target in mind for this ball. So I went to this cave by the mines, which the children yearn for. And you may know where this is going. It's no secret that when you make a dragon sandwich down here, Bagon will start popping out of the walls. And lucky me, I found the green shiny oh pseudo legendary <laughs> very quickly. Oh my goodness. Now you may be saying to yourself, no, don't catch it with a Dusk Ball. The Friend Ball matches so much better. Well, two things. One, I have a better target in mind for the Friend Ball. And two, I'm planning to evolve this little baby in order for the colors to match even better. Just wait. So I caught it and did just that. Wait, that really doesn't match that well. All right, all right, so hear me out. When I was choosing which Pokemon to catch for this challenge, I was looking at their home models. And Shiny Salamence in Pokemon Home has orange wings. In game, they are definitely red. So I actually needed to find myself a better option here. And in order to do that, I went over to my Scarlet file to hunt for a different pseudo legendary. I made a dragon boost and went down to area zero. Now, I may be the only person in the history of the world who has come to this area with a dragon boost, not looking for Roaring Moon. So of course, I didn't find Zuelios, and found said Roaring Moon. Making me, again, probably the only person to ever phase for Zuelios with Roaring Moon. Never before seen stuff here on the Thumbus YouTube channel. 
But what would be even crazier is if we did it again. Okay, this is actually a little ridiculous. How in the world did I find two shiny Roaring Moon before our target? Insane. And to keep in theme, I also caught them in Dusk Balls. Fortunately, the next shiny that showed up was the one I wanted. And this green pseudo legendary dragon matches the Dusk Ball better than the last three. Keeping ourselves over in the Scarlet file, believe it or not, there was a third pseudo legendary that I wanted to capture. And unlike the last hunt, there was absolutely no issue with this one. I made a rock sandwich, climbed this mountain, and was immediately greeted with my target. Which I obviously caught with the Master Ball. Okay, what? What is this guy smoking? The Master Ball? Come on, that thing's green. There's no way to possibly make this thing match the Master Ball. It's literally impossible. I stand corrected. For real though, I think this is the best match for the Master Ball in Scarlet and Violet. Maybe in all of Pokemon, Pupitar has possibly the deepest purple color scheme. Honestly, an incredible shiny. And I'm not just saying that because purple is my favorite color. Now, if there was a shiny with Venonat's color scheme, maybe we'd be singing a different tune. But this is my video, my challenge, so deal with it. And what better way to follow it up than with, you guessed it, another pseudo legendary. Jangmo has a little scale on its head. I'm sure most people don't think much about it. But if you find this bad boy shiny, it's a whole different story. That one insignificant scale turns pink, which sets us up for our next hunt. The love ball is a pokeball with a heart on it, and that scale looks like a heart. So you see where this is going, right? And this hunt is a really simple one. Jengmo is the only dragon type that spawns in the Paradise the Barrens in Kitakami. Not only that, but its shiny sticks out like a sore thumb, especially if you're hunting this thing at night which I was, and the lovely little guy showed up after just five minutes. Maybe the perfect match. Uh, hi. This is me in the future while editing this video. I just thought of a way better shiny for the love ball. Shiny female Heracross. Literally would have been perfect. Okay, so I don't know why, but so many of the balls match pseudo legendaries. So I am once again looking for a pseudo, but this time it's my favorite pseudo line. That being the gooey guy, Gumi. I started off this hunt at the swamp. Gumi spawns here, but unfortunately, so does another pseudo, which also matches a specific ball. Curious. Anyways, not only was the other dragon type making this hunt difficult, but the brightness of the swamp during the day makes this one of my least favorite places to look for shinies. I did spend a fair bit of time looking here, but luckily there was another spot I could search. Thanks to the help of my chat, also I was streaming this on YouTube, I discovered by this watchtower near the big lake, you can also find Gumi. Now, to be quite honest, Gumi is just an annoying Pokemon to hunt for, even in this spot. There's just a bunch of Tatsugiri and sometimes Dreepy and Altaria. I was probably better off staying in the swamp for this hunt, but at least this place didn't hurt my eyes as much. That being said, for some reason, I absolutely started to lose my marbles during this hunt. It just divulged into chaos. It wasn't a particularly long hunt, but the act of riding back and forth looking for the little gooey guy for a few hours was definitely getting to me. But by some grace of the shiny hunting gods, I didn't phase and found the little stinker. <gasps> Oh my god! <laughs> it happened! It's funny because I've caught my fair share of shiny Gumi before, and yet somehow never noticed that its color scheme aligns perfectly with the heel ball. So that was what I was catching this little cutie in. And then I evolved her into Sligu, and then into Gudra, because Gudra is the goat, and the ball matches even better in my opinion. For the quick ball, let's go really quick. No, but seriously, there's a couple of good options for the quick ball. Bergmite, Gibble, Drifloon, and the aforementioned Dreepy. I ultimately chose Bergmite, 
which has an isolated encounter on this little island at Castle Royal Lake. Maybe I should have went with Gibble or Dreepy though to continue the pseudo legendary trend. If you know shiny color schemes, you might know there's at least one more shiny that matches the quick ball really well. But I had a different plan in mind for that shiny. So I went back over to my Scarlet file and took a flight to Kitakami, where I got this lovely Gligar outbreak to show up. Gligar and Gliscor are some of my favorite Pokemon of all time, and they both have incredible shinies. And I was looking to catch this bad boy in the Beast Ball. Only problem is, the Beast Ball has by far the worst catching rate of any Pokeball. So, we might be here for a little while. Oh, never mind. And a quick Evo later, this is one of those ones that I'm not 100% confident in, but I do think the color scheme matches pretty well. The Friend Ball requires a shiny that is friend shaped, usually something round, like Meryl, but I think I have a better option available to me. I actually recently caught this Pokemon in a Friend Ball, but I had to give it away. So I am once again going to be hunting for the very first Pokemon, Bulby. Not only is Bulby a cute little guy, but I adore its shiny, Green Gang, and Bulby truly is a friend, because it showed up nice and quick for me. And now that I had it, all I had to do was evolve it for the ball to match even better, to Ivysaur, and then into Venusaur. I'm not sure which evolution the friend ball matches better, but I like Venusaur better than Ivysaur, so that's what I decided to go with. One of my favorite balls to catch shiny Pokemon in is the Premier Ball. If a shiny Pokemon doesn't have a great match, my go-to ball is the Premier. On top of that, white shinies are some of the coolest there are. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that I have this level 100 shiny toad school in my party at all times as my Spore user. And, of course, it's caught in a Premier Ball. But there is a better shiny in my opinion for this ball, all because of this little strip of red. And it's a shiny I've caught in my past two videos as well. But just like the Bulby, I don't have it anymore. So, if it wasn't already obvious, I'm talking about Lit. I truly don't know if there's a better option for this ball. It might be the best combination shiny to ball in all of Pokemon. And Shiny Litten is also one of the most obvious shinies to spot. It did take me a bit of time before finding it, but as soon as it pops up, it's basically impossible to miss. Okay, I will now never hunt for Litten again, so don't ask me to. Let's go from one of my favorite balls to one of my least. The Sport Ball has to be the dumbest type of Pokeball. It's literally a regular Pokeball with an S on it. And unlike our last shiny, I'm less confident with this one. I found myself a Grubbin outbreak. Shiny Grubbin also matches the Premier Ball pretty good, but I figured I'd look for a shiny with the most balanced amount of red and white, and it popped up pretty quickly. Again, I don't know if this is the best choice, so let me know what you guys think. The Dive Ball is another one that surprisingly has a lot of shinies that match it really well. I mean, maybe it's not that surprising. Just find yourself a light blue shiny, and it'll probably look really cool in a Dive Ball. Like the Yanma I was talking about before, but some of my favorite shinies for this ball are two Gen 9 Pokemon, Cloth and Orthworm. But even better than those two is a Pokemon that just got brought back into Scarlet and Violet with the Indigo Disc. And no, it's not a starter. Instead, it's this cute little igloo. Now, hunting this little guy could cause some trouble on the icy mountain in the terrarium. So instead of doing that, I found myself in a lowland Sandshrew outbreak, where I went and knocked out 60, and fairly soon after, oh, found myself the so blue-bellied crazy. rat. Sandshrew will always be one of the cutest Pokemon out there. And although this shiny may not match the dive ball amazingly, just wait because there is no better match for the dive ball than Alolan Sand Slash. For the Dream Ball, I decided to hunt a Pokemon that is literally no one in the world's favorite Pokemon. And if you tell me it is, I simply will refuse to believe you. That being Drowsy. Drowsy is an idiot, but it has a really nice pink shiny. And its name is Drowsy. It's the perfect fit. I was also considering hunting Slackoth for the Dream Ball, 
because it also matches well and it is an eepy little guy, but ultimately decided to go with Drowsy. With a psychic encounter boost near these ruins by the starting area of these games, there's a lot of Drowsy. Something I've mentioned in previous videos is that the good people over at Game Freak definitely put Pokemon with similar color schemes as shiny Pokemon in the same spots. For Drowsy, its shiny is pink, and it just so happens the pink Flamigo also spawns right here. Coincidence? I think not. Fortunately, I didn't get fooled by this, and had a shiny Drowsy appear pretty fast. Oh, let's go. But I actually decided to evolve this Drowsy, because its evolution, Hypno, also has a really nice pink shiny. Better than Drowsy's in my opinion. Now, does Hypno's shiny match the Dream Ball better than Drowsy? Well, I wasn't actually too sure about that. So, since I didn't have any other Psychic types to look for, and had extra Dream Balls, I just ended up finding another Drowsy to catch. So, you let me know which of these two dinguses match the Dream Ball better. The Fast Ball is another Pokeball that I think is really, really dumb. Its design is mid, its color scheme is the same as the Repeat Ball, and did they really need a Fast Ball when there's already a Quick Ball? This ball was obviously made with one Pokemon in mind, Minin. No, but seriously, obviously it's for Pikachu. Unfortunately for Pikachu, I would say the original color scheme matches the Fast Ball better than Shiny Pikachu. Regardless, I went to search for a shiny Pikachu for this ball, but then I ended up failing said shiny. And instead of attempting to reclaim it, I went back over to the mines with a fighting boost to hunt this little punching bag. I think shiny Makohita matches the fastball better than Pikachu. It's far from the perfect match though. And again, this was another combination I wasn't entirely confident in. So let me know what you guys think. Anyways though, I found the shiny and caught it. So like I said, the fast ball looks a lot like the repeat ball. I wouldn't say I enjoy the repeat ball, but at least it wasn't made with a single Pokemon in mind. That being said, I have the same issue with the repeat ball. There isn't really a great shiny for this thing. I settled on looking for Timber. Timber cracks me up because he's just a little guy holding a log and this log holding creature didn't want to make an appearance. So after searching for a little while, I chose to get myself a Timber Outbreak. But his older brother showed up instead, and their shinies are practically the same. So I went over there and Two, once again four, practiced my counting six, skills. Eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. Yo! Another shiny I really am not confident in the combination. Last video, I caught a shiny Totodile in a Lure Ball. And although I think it's a fitting ball, Totodile isn't the best shiny for this ball. So I went to a Clauncher Outbreak, hopped into the water, and had possibly the fastest hunt of this challenge. Finding the red lobster? Is Clauncher a lobster? In just 30 seconds. A very fitting ball for this amazing shiny. I did end up evolving it into Clotzer because it has more blue in it, so I think it matches just a bit better. The Netball is another one I really enjoy. For this teal colored ball, I wanted a teal shiny, and my sights were set on Horsey. Probably not the most fitting shiny for this ball, but one I just really wanted to hunt for. So in the canyon biome, with the water boost, it's where you'll find Horsey. The problem is that there's also a bunch of other water types in this area, like Squirtle, or Horsey's evolution, Seedra. Oops. So instead of having that happen again, I found a Horsey Outbreak. Now here's where I made my second mistake of this hunt. I, for some reason, decided to use Synchro Mode, which I've talked about before. It's the best, worst feature in all of Pokemon. I love running around a Swampert, massacring the Seahorse, but... Honestly, that's on me though. I had more than enough time to notice that shiny. Although I will say, it did kind of blend in with the water. So maybe not my fault. Sadly, this was a costly error. 
because another shiny horsey wouldn't show up for a long time. But it is a cutie. Then I wanted to hunt for my safari ball catch. But before I even had the chance to look for it, so that clauncher wasn't the fastest hunt of this challenge. Although this wasn't really a hunt, but a shiny's a shiny. Nice. This is one of those shinies that doesn't really have a great match to it. But since this video is about matching shinies and pokeball, I figured the best two matches were either the repeat ball or the fast ball. And ultimately, I went with the fast ball. All right, now I can actually hunt for my target, and that would be Tauros. Now, at this outbreak, I made the same mistake as the horsey outbreak. You would think I would have learned my lesson, but I did not. And of course, a shiny popped up before I even knocked out 60. And I just knew I was too far away from this shiny. As soon as I went back to my trainer, it was Jover. I refused to give up on it though. I did everything I could to clear a path and hopefully lure it closer. And then I accidentally despawned it. Whoops. Okay, but to be fair, the reason I was using Synchro Mode here was because I knew I would get absolutely bombarded by Tauros if I didn't. And then I would get stuck in an infinite loop of battles. No worries though, because I'm sure I can find another shiny Tauros easy peasy. No. Somehow, I ended up finding another one literally 20 seconds later. Now, the nest ball also matches this shiny really well, but I went with the safari ball just because it felt right. Speaking of the nest ball, I wanted to catch the sour apple in one, and there just so happened to be an outbreak for that little guy in my game. I think applin outbreaks were broken before the DLCs came out, because I had never seen one until they did. This outbreak is a little tough though, because Applin is just so tiny, and its shiny blends in with the grass. Fortunately, I was able to find one after about an hour or so of hunting. Alright, let's finally talk about the Moon Ball. The most obvious choice is of course the Moonlight Pokemon, Umbreon. One of the greatest shiny evolutions. So I did a little date skipping and found myself an Umbreon outbreak. What's a bit annoying about Umbreon though, is that it only spawns when the moon is out. So of course, it became daytime, and then I had to reset my clock to make it night again. But soon after, I was graced with one of my favorite shiny Pokemon, this little Kremlin. With this golden yellow shiny, which used to be a lot more brown in older gens. Both look really good in my opinion though. Now, I was actually considering choosing Sableye as my luxury ball capture, but I thought of a better shiny for it. I did still catch it in a luxury ball though. And then after that little kerfuffle, the shiny I was actually looking for showed up. Which, obviously, is the best choice for the moon ball. Color scheme wise, and theming. And finally, for our final ball, the luxury. Instead of Sableye, I wanted to find a metallic -y shiny, and I thought our best option was Reverum. So I went looking for where they spawn, and what do you know, I found a completely different shiny. I know I said before the repeat ball doesn't have too many good options, but I kinda like it with this Pyroar. Anyways, I found the actual spot to hunt Reverum right after. Now I was planning on hunting this last shiny the same way we found our first, but there's two reasons why that didn't work. These idiots zoom off basically as soon as they spawn. So it's actually kinda hard to count to 16. And second, sometimes a blizzard would start on this mountain. Now, I don't have any footage of it, but just imagine my screen looking something like this. So because of that, I just ended up finding a Varum outbreak. And then I went AFK for a little bit, but when I came back, and I evolved it into Reverum a gorgeous shiny fitting of the luxury ball. So there you have it, the best shiny for each Pokeball in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, at least according to me. Don't forget to comment letting me know what shinies you think match which Pokeballs the best. And make sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on other amazing shiny challenges. Thanks for watching, bye!